What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect. In this video, I'm going to show how we can use Photoshop Generative Fill in order to create matte painting visual effects that you can composite inside of your videos or films within Adobe After Effects. For this specific video, I'll be focusing on adding distant set extensions to simple locked off shots. However, I do plan on making this a three-part series, the second one being how we can track our generated matte paintings into our shot within After Effects. And then finally, in the third video of this series, we're going to use these generated matte paintings inside of Blender 3D and project them onto geometry in order to create distant 3D environments that are more impressive with a moving camera. Anyways guys, without further ado, let's get started. Here we are inside of After Effects. The first thing we're going to do is import our footage that we're going to work with and add a matte painting to. So I'll go ahead and navigate to a few video options here. I'm going to actually do two examples for this video. The first one will be this locked off shot of this shaman here beating a drum. So as you can see, very simple piece of footage. And what we're going to do for the shot is add some architecture in this uh, deep background right here and see what generative fill can do for us. And you can see why using this effect on shots that are just locked off in a tripod can be very simple because we can just, you know, cut out our character here with a very simple garbage mat. And then we can add whatever we want behind our character without having to rotoscope or key out our character in a more complex way. So this is the simplest way we can use this effect. And you can use this technique to add a lot of production value to your film. So go ahead and close this here and I'll just add this to our to our project and then we'll just create a new composition with this footage and now what we're going to do is we're going to export a still frame of this image that we're going to use within Photoshop to uh, create our matte painting so I'll find a frame that I like here for adding our matte painting to and then I'll just go to composition save frame as file and then we're just going to change the output to where I want to save this Photoshop PSD file so I'll probably just do it under my folder here that I've created for my uh, tutorials and then we'll label this shaman man and we'll call it still dot psd and go ahead and save that and then finally to render out the still frame we'll click on render and now we can open up this file in photoshop and get to work making our matte painting so now we'll go ahead and open up the latest beta version of photoshop which has the generative fill option and then we can open up our psd file that we have just saved Go ahead and open that up. All right guys, so inside of Photoshop, right off the bat, you'll notice that we have this new toolbar here, and this contains all the tools for generative fill. So you can see we have a few different options here right off the bat, but as I mentioned, we want to actually add a matte painting to a specific part of the image. So in order to access some new controls and to do this, first we'll make a selection where we want to add this element. Now, there are a variety of different elements we could add here, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to add a castle hidden in these trees here. So I'll go ahead and just go to the quick selection lasso tool, and I'll just circle where I want the castle to be added, something like this. And then I'll just click on generative fill, and now I'll just type in medieval castle, and go ahead and click on generate. And now right off the bat, you can see we have in our right properties panel, three different options to choose from. And for just a few clicks, I think these are looking pretty decent. If we zoom in here, you can see the textures are a little blurry, but you can honestly just clean that up with some manual techniques, or you can actually use generative fill again and try to add certain things over top of this result. So these are some interesting options for us. You can see the generative fill actually uses the lighting based on the entire image to composite in the element that you want with its own similar lighting, which is very important. As I mentioned a lot of the times on this channel, lighting is one of the most important aspects of combining CG elements with live action. And of course, the same thing applies to matte paintings as well. So generative fill is kind of like your matte painting helper, saving you a lot of time in that initial result. So we have a few different options available to us. What's really cool about this one here is it's actually built kind of this uh, structure to support the castle. It's almost as if it knows it's built on some kind of slope here, but this is AI, so it's based off of training data. So it's just doing its best to approximate what would look good. Now, this first result, uh, a little bit wonky. The second result could be pretty good, but I'm actually gonna try to adjust our results a little bit. It'll actually keep our variations here, but we can still add some more to the prompt or redo our prompt here. As long as we're selecting the same generative layer and we haven't reselected anything else with our quick selection tool, it'll actually be applying the uh, generative fill to that same original selection. So maybe I'll try rustic old castle. Try this out and then it'll just give us three more options to choose from and then we can choose the best one from there and then add upon it if we like. So we have a few more options here. You can see now we're getting into some weird results here. This third one is actually pretty nice. I'm going to try one more time and uh, see what we can get once more. I still like this one the best so far but but let's go ahead and try one more one more prompt here. So we'll try large medieval castle with 
towers. I just want it to be a little bit more prevalent in our scene here. Go ahead and generate this and let's see what we get. So this is more of actually what I'm looking for, a little bit of a taller structure. I actually like this one quite a bit as well. So we have a few different options here. This one, the perspective is a little bit off. You can see the generative fill thinks the shot is a little bit more of a high angle, but this one right here, the perspective is matching a bit better. So I think I'm just gonna go with this one for the sake of this tutorial. One thing I might do is add a road kind of coming from the right of camera. So what we can do is we can just select this area right here, click on the generative fill button, and we can say add dirt, we'll say old dirt road, just in case it adds some cars for us for some reason. And as I guessed, it actually added some cars for us as well. But we have three different variations here to choose from. I think this one's not bad. We do have some vehicles here. You can just remove this, select that, and then click on generative fill, remove vehicle. Okay, so it removed it. That's a little better. All right, so we have an interesting dirt road here. We have our castle. One thing we could do is maybe grunge up our castle a bit to make it a little bit less uh, painterly-like, but probably what I would do to get that high resolution detail and that grunge on the castle itself is just use some manual techniques with some textures and just paint over the actual castles. Because if I select certain areas and try to add grunge, it still might give a uh, sort of painterly result, but I think you'll agree with me that, that this is a pretty insane starting point and possibly a final result for a matte painting of a castle. Now, as you can see here on the right panel here, all of our different generative layers are here separately. And the nice thing about this is we can now save our PSD file and import that directly inside of After Effects. And you will still have access to all these different layers in order to do those final tweaks, maybe track it into your shot if your shot's moving, for example, and just have a little bit more control in your compositing process. So anyways, you can see these are our generative fill layers. We've removed our car with this one added a road, and then finally our castle right here. And all the time here, you still have access to your different results here. So anyways, really nice result. Let's go ahead and export this PSD and import it inside of After Effects. Go ahead and save our file. We'll open up After Effects. And now to import that PSD with all of your different layers, we can go to File, Import, File, and then we'll click on our Shaman Man still here, this PSD file, go ahead and open this up. And in order to have all of our different layers included in our After Effects comp, we can import this as a composition with editable layer styles. Go ahead and click OK. And now you can see here, if we open up this composite, we get the same layers that we have created inside of Photoshop. Now, obviously, if we play through this shot, our character isn't moving because it's a still image, but that's no problem. All we have to do is grab our original footage on top of this composite, and now we can make a very simple garbage mat around our original footage. So you can see we can select our footage here, just do a quick little garbage mat around our character. As long as our character doesn't include any parts of our mat painting, we don't have to do any intense rotoscoping. We can just do this simple mask that I'm creating right now, so like so. And if you want, we can feather this mask a bit to hide any rough edges that we might see. And now we can go to our composition settings. We can extend our timeline a bit, and then extend our generative fill layers. And if we play through our shot, we have our nice map painting in the background. So pretty simple little composite here. That is how you can use generative fill on a still shot where your actor doesn't include any of your set extension fairly easily to add a fair bit of production value to your videos or films. All right, guys, so for this video, I want to share one more way you can drastically improve your videos with this generative fill by actually increasing the size and scale of the shot itself. So what I want to show you guys how to do in this next example is how we can actually take a medium shot of a character and then expand that to a much wider shot and then use generative fill to fill in all of that environment. So for this example, I'm going to use the shot of this woman on the boardwalk. And what I want to do is actually make this a much wider shot and continually add the city in the background on either side of the frame as well as expand the foreground of the shot. So I'll go ahead and close this here and just like we've done for our first composite we'll add this to our project. I'll drag this to a new composition and we'll export a frame that we'd like to use our Photoshop generative fill on. I'll just use the first frame here. I'll go to composition, save frame as file. We'll use our Photoshop output module and we'll choose where we want to output it. So we'll call this woman on boardwalk extension and we'll save it as a PSD, click on save. And finally, to actually export this image as a PSD, we have to click on the render button right here. So go ahead and do that. And once again, we'll open up Photoshop, we'll go to open. We will find the still we have saved here, open this up, 
And now let's get to work creating more of this background. So to extend this background, the first thing we're going to want to do is select the crop button here. And then what I'm going to do is drag this further up. So I'll just drag this up. I'll press shift to maintain our aspect ratio. And we'll just go up maybe something like this. And then I'll also bring this guy down a bit like so. So she's still centered and we're just gonna fill in the areas where she's not. And now we'll go ahead and click on the checkbox here. And now we're going to select the portion of our image where we have data already. So we'll go ahead and select this with the box select tool like so. And then conveniently on our generative fill toolbar here, we have an invert selection button. So go ahead and click on that. And now as you can see here, we have everything except where our photo is selected. And we can go here and we can just click on generative fill. And if you want generative fill to just generate what it thinks will be there based on the data from your photograph, you can just click on generate without prompting anything and wait for it to fill in that background. And just like that, it has attempted to fill in our background. Now, obviously there are some issues here, so we can take a look at our three options here. I like this one quite a bit. Our skyline is fairly well extended. Third option is not bad as well. I think I may actually like the second option the most. However, let's say we want to remove this bench here. I'm actually just going to select it here like so. And once again, we're going to use generative fill to remove this bench. So we can say remove bench generate and that's a bit cleaner now i'm okay with this bench here however this whole side of the image is looking a fair bit uncanny so what i might do just for the sake of this tutorial rather than doing some manual cleanup using the clone stamp tool and such i'll just select this whole portion and we'll say maybe we'll try adding a fence for example so we'll select generate to fill or maybe we'll do like a concrete wall so concrete wall just to kind of hide the seams of everything. So let's take a look at what it gives us. And now, as you can see here, that cleaned it up quite a bit. Now, obviously this looks a little bit like a painting, but with a little bit of cleanup work, you can really get some realistic results. I wanna try cleaning up this image a little bit more inside of Photoshop before doing some manual techniques inside of After Effects and blending our live action footage with the matte painting itself. So the main thing that's standing out to me right now is this hard edge right here, as well as this seam. So I'll just go to our quick selection tool and just draw a little circle around this edge first like so and we'll just tell generative fill to add more clouds okay generate all right, and just like that, it's cleaned up that seam for us. Now, once you have this result inside of Photoshop, we can bring this inside of After Effects and do our final bit of tweaking. Now, obviously this is a matte painting. It doesn't actually move. So anything that does move, you actually have to replace using other compositing techniques. For example, this water here that's been generated on the left and right of the frame that isn't already in our live action shot probably needs to be either duplicated from the plate or generated using some CG water. So I'll probably just try to duplicate this water from our live action shot and then composite it into these areas as well. But let's go ahead and finish off this tutorial just by bringing this matte painting into After Effects and adding our live action footage to it. Let's open up After Effects once again. I'll go to File, Import, File, and I'll open up our PSD file here. Go ahead and open. Once again, we'll choose the composition import kind and use editable layer styles. And now we can just open up this composition here. And just like the previous example, this is just going to be a still frame. So we still have to composite our live action footage into this still matte painting. So I'll just drag our footage here on top of everything and I'll open up our transform options, bring down the opacity so we can see through it a bit. And I'll just line our live action shot up to our matte painting. So scale her down a bit, bring the opacity back to 100. And once again, we'll do a basic garbage matte around our character. And then under our mask feathering, we'll feather this maybe 30 pixels just so everything blends in nice and smoothly. And this is looking pretty good. So now, as you can see here, we've taken this original piece of footage here and created a much wider shot using these various generative fill layers right here. Anyways guys, that is how you can use generative fill in order to create set extension visual effects inside of Photoshop and Adobe After Effects. I hope this video was helpful. Stay tuned for the other two more advanced parts of this series so you can learn how to track these environments into your shot as well as use Blender 3D with generative AI to create impressive camera projections. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Let us know what visual effects you'd like to learn next on the channel and I'll see you next time.